In a few days, Israelis will be called to cast their vote to decide who their new prime minister will be. But this is the second time in six months that they vote for the national elections. Why so? Well, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, who won the past election in April, failed to secure a governing coalition. It's a very important thing and a very difficult thing to do in Israel to form a coalition. There are many small parties and every one of them has special requests. It's very difficult to put them all together. So what has changed during these six months? Does Benjamin Netanyahu stand more chance? chances to win or does his opponent, the former chief of staff, Benny Gantz, stand more chances than him? Israel is going to the polls again. It is the second time in six months that voters are called upon to decide who their prime minister will be. A last round of elections in April, Benjamin Netanyahu failed to form a government. His coalition of right-wing, far-right and ultra-orthodox parties managed to get the majority of seats. But when the time came to secure it, irreconcilable divisions between Netanyahu and his former defense minister Avigdor Lieberman caused the coalition to collapse. Netanyahu opted to vote for the parliament's dissolution and call for new elections. The alternative would have been a presidential intervention to give his main opponent, Israel's former chief of staff Benny Gantz, the chance to form a coalition. Lieberman represents a conservative secular segment of the Israeli society which demands that all citizens, including Orthodox Jews who are currently exempted, serve in the military. Many Israelis feel it is unfair that Orthodox Jews who make up 10% of the Israeli population enjoy the state's security without personally contributing to it. Lieberman's decision to stand firm seems to have gained his party, Israel Our Home, more popularity, making it potentially Israel's kingmaker. Not much has changed since the last elections. Netanyahu is working hard to gather more consensus on the right wing. He pledged to annex Israeli settlements inside the Palestinian territories and paid a visit to the ultra-nationalist settlement inside the West Bank city of Hebron, where a thousand Jewish settlers live heavily barricaded and armed inside a Palestinian city. His opponent, Benny Gantz, is courting a more progressive electorate. He criticized Netanyahu's decision of not allowing U.S. Congress women, Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, to visit the West Bank and welcomed a new coalition of Arab parties taking part into the elections. No Benny Gantz, a former chief of staff, heavily criticized Netanyahu's approach to Israel's security, accusing him of an attempt to politicize the successes of the Israeli Defense Forces to favor himself. For instance, when Netanyahu recently announced Israel's security plan, he unveiled a secret nuclear site in Iran. Today we reveal that uh, yet another secret nuclear site was exposed in the archives that we brought from uh, Tehran. In this site, Iran conducted experiments to develop nuclear weapons. <laughs> Gantz had no generous words for him. He said, quote, If I was Netanyahu, I would do as much as possible and talk as little as possible. He is doing the opposite, and it is a big mistake. Gantz talks to more secular voters, but he holds the same position as Netanyahu on a range of issues. He believes a solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is not in sight since Palestinians are not capable of guaranteeing Israel's security. He approves the concept of Israel as a Jewish state and pushes for a zero-tolerance attitude against Hamas in Gaza. 
Iran and all its proxies active in West Gaza. And Israel's election challenger Benny Gantz saying, President Rouhani, on my watch, there will be no Chamberlain Munich agreement with your vicious regime. On my watch, there will be no appeasement. On my watch, Iran will not threaten Israel by taking over Syria, Lebanon, or Gaza Strip. Nor will it undermine pragmatic regimes in the Middle East. On my watch, Iran will not have nuclear weapons. All in all, the campaign of these Israeli elections redo has been milder than the previous. A more disaffected electorate is expected to be more reluctant to go out and vote. And this could turn into a problem for Netanyahu. Many in Israel consider this election unnecessarily expensive and an obstacle to the country's smooth functioning. And blame Netanyahu's ambition. Recent polls started showing the center-left front ahead of Netanyahu's right-wing coalition, a trend which should worry the current prime minister.